Greetings. Welcome to a new episode of Art Matters. I'm Wayne Quackenbush, your host. Um, I, as you've seen, interview local artists. I also am the CEO of the Portsmouth Arts Guild and have a place in Newport where I showcase people's work. And today we have a longtime friend, uh, Brad Sherman. And I met Brad through, I believe, one of uh, Ricky Gagnon's new art uh, gallery yeah. uh, training school show in Cranston, the training the, the, at the training, training school. school. Yeah, and you were showing artwork there. Yeah, and uh, we have mutual friends, and we've kind of uh, been friendly and have worked on events. And he eventually joined the guild, and he shows at uh, different galleries around the state of Rhode Island, and. Um, as you'll see, he's an avid painter and photographer, and uh, he also is kind of a local celebrity because he gets on the news all the time. But you'll find out about that in a minute, yeah, too. Usually good reasons. <laughs> <laughs> so I found out that you are originally from Rhode Island yeah. and that you received some of your training from URI, where you also worked. Yeah, mostly arts where I got basically all of the training, uh -huh. pretty much, except for working with uh, a woman painter for a while after that and stuff. Were you uh, kind of apprenticing or? Oh, it just, I, I think I met her through, her name's Peggy Henderson, I met her through um, South County Art Association mm -hmm. and uh, she kind of like took me under her wing and uh, I used to meet with her like once a week and she, you know, she'd kind of like assign me something to do and then I would meet her the next week for like coffee and we'd go over the thing. So it was kind of nice because she'd give me a lot of feedback. About kind of like the visual, uh, uh, well, kind of like taking piano, piano lessons except that Right, hard. right, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, one time, the first time I showed up for a class in Wickford that she that I took a class of hers at, um, I somehow the schedule got messed up, and I was under the impression that it was going to be a uh, painting class. But uh, when I got there, I saw everybody there with the uh, big snap-on drawing boards. Okay. And I said, "Oh, this isn't good because I have a canvas." But yeah. anyway. <laughs> so I told her about it, and she had this model, this guy bottling in all these different poses. So what I did was, at first, I just took my painting canvas, and I started, like, on the left, and I put him his first pose there, then I put this one next to it, and that one, and that one. Sure, absolutely. Yeah, and, then and it came out pretty well. And then yeah. finally, somebody donated some uh, drawing paper, and <laughs> <laughs> you went to town. Yeah. Uh, so uh, I know that you are both an avid painter and a photographer, and it's my impression that your work seems to be done by two different people because your paintings are um, a little funny. In a, in a, in a, I mean, there's, a, there's oh, an yeah. element of humor yeah, to your that. painting. Right. But your photography, for the most part, has uh, more of a communing with nature feel to it. Though occasionally you will come up with something and caption it. Right. Like oh, yeah. you have um, you have a thing that you show on Facebook called the post of the day. Where you take <laughs> a picture of a post somewhere on right. a beach or yeah. a fence in a farm or right. something. Um, so so it seems very different. And we can start. You can start bringing okay. up work, and, and we can talk about it. I also have a daily log now. So. Oh, daily log. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. This is uh, hold it properly here. Then perpendicular By to the camera. Sheena, Sheen Calais print. I don't know what that is. Well, You'll have to explain what that actually, is. It's uh, actually where you do like an etching on the paper first. Some of this has. Uh, aqua tinting on it which gives it that kind of like little grainy effect uh -huh. the black here down yeah. here and then you take um, it was handmade paper and wet it and 
lay it across and then run it through the uh, press. The press. So this adheres to the. Oh, so that paper is actually yeah. You don't have to show it to me. Show oh, it to the okay, camera. yeah. Is, so the paper is actually attached. Yeah. So this would be kind of a mono print. Yeah, like, kind I mean, of. a mono print meaning you only make one and you're not going to do a right, series of right. these. Right, right. Yeah, you can't do yep, a yep, yep. edition of them. But. but that's that kind of like uh, that. That's not humorous at all. <laughs> oh, well, I, I guess I was into the Egyptian thing. Well, there goes my theory. <laughs> like I said, this is this is like one of the first things I did at URI. Oh, okay. Printing. Yeah, this is way All back. All right, so we're going to go through the history. This is the way back machine. The history of, of Brad yes. Sherman. All right, so uh, let's see. Oh, that's what I'm talking about. Yeah. This was um, based on a room at the Griswold Museum in Lyme, Old Lyme, Connecticut. Oh, yeah. Yeah. This is one of the rooms that had the uh, piano in it, and uh, so I took photos of it. And oh, and that's a, that's a fabulous place if you oh, like yeah. art. I mean, there's just it, oh, there's yeah. endless stuff in that town to look at. It used to be an artist colony. Right, yeah. yeah. And so there's lots of history there, lots of beautiful museum. Yep. <clears throat> and so. uh, we took a trip there with the guild, and, mm -hmm. and people did uh, plein air painting there oh, as wow. well. Yeah. 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 So well, it's, got, it's kind of neat the way they have it. Some of the rooms kept the way they were. Like yes. There's one room with the table set up with the paints and the oh, canvas. Oh, yeah. There's a studio set up. Yep, yeah, absolutely. Got the uh, old fashioned bed with the mattress that has the ropes on it that hold it in, which I guess is something to do with the expression uh, being tucked in or whatever. This I did not know that. <laughs> the right, woman was right. telling us. But, yes. So did you take a photograph and work from that, or did you just kind of remember it? I had I have a photograph of it. I mean, there wasn't a person in it. It was the piano and the other stuff. And I think I played a little with the uh, wallpaper. Uh -huh. uh, <laughs> But it was that. Well, I mean, kind of I always love how you kind of you kind of flatten everything out and, and make everything kind of on the same plane, but you still also keep the perspective too. And I've always kind of liked that about your work. And yeah, you're thanks. you're not afraid to use color. That's no, always that's good. No, that's one thing I don't. <laughs> I, I haven't painted too many uh, doll yeah, paintings do color-wise, anyway. Yeah, but. you don't do any. Uh, there's no monochrome or no, black and white. No. None of that heavy heavy sepia. Everything's kind of do you work straight out of the tube? Or yeah, do you? usually. Okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <clears throat> That's really cool. So let's see something. The next well, one. All right. So this was um, every year at uh, the Spring Bowl. Spring Bowl Gallery. They have the Fakes and Forgery yes. show. Yes. Yep. Which I usually try to enter every year. Yes. And uh, this was. I don't know if you can see that little thing. But That's the old But uh, this is the Norman, Norman Rockwell. Rockwell Thanksgiving dinner. Which has um, been parodied a bunch yeah. of times, but never like this. <laughs> so we have uh, Frida serving the uh, turkey. So does yeah. this, that's Frida Kahlo. So does this count as a fake and forgery, or is it? It's yeah, because I mean it's. Oh, right, because you're uh, based it's on. It's like, okay, so well. it's like the fake part of it is it's based on the. You're you're trying to convince everybody that Norman Rockwell painted this. Well, or that you know these <laughs> these artists got together every year from different times and, and who, centuries and, and, and had Thanksgiving. Here? We have uh, we have Van Gogh or Van Gogh, and we have uh, Andy Warhol, right? Yeah. And well, then uh, that's a very Cubist-looking uh, Picasso. Yeah. And is that Leonardo? Yeah. Yep. And then his clocks up here with the. Yep. The I forgot what that man yeah. is called. But your your width is the equal to your length. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Some people. And I know so, you do that every year. You and I think you've won some prizes there too. Um, actually, I won a prize. Uh, with this one, it was uh, most, voted the most humorous. Most humorous, yeah, yes. So that was right. nice. Yeah, yeah. So. Yeah, very cool. So, would you say that you're influenced by all those artists? Oh yeah. And I mean, those are some of my uh, favorite artists. Well, yeah. 
especially Van Gogh. Yeah, yeah I like because of the, I like Warhol the, the with, color. The, with all the pop and stuff. And I've seen that, I've had seen you do uh, portraits of Van Gogh and after Van Gogh over the years. Oh yeah, I've got, you know, actually I have a small one here today, but um, I didn't want you to think I do just all little paintings. No, I have one that's uh, about. Is that good? Yep, yeah, that's good. Uh, five feet by three feet, lady uh -huh. in a red tub, but I didn't bring that one, so. I've seen that, though. Yeah, yeah. Now, the only the only thing that I do when I do a painting is I always have to have a camera that will fit in my car. Yeah. I don't do anything bigger than that. Right, yep. And uh, what's the subject matter here? Well, it's uh, called the Roadhouse, and got like a uh, blues guitarist there, and the pool tables. And, and again, uh, I like how you broke up the space because you have the parallelograms and, and uh, the perspective is kind of implied and, and the colors just laid on flat right out of the tube, except for maybe the skin color. Yeah. Also, I used um, the lighting and the table and stuff, thinking, you know, Van Gogh's paintings in the cafe. Yep. Where they have the, I think they have they have pool tables. I thought they they had some really kind of long are. tables. There but also, but you also there's one where, of his apartment that I always love with the open window and the chair. You know that one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we gotta get to some of your photography. All now. right. Getting into uh, like walking along the shore and just looking at some of the. Uh, like arrangements that Mother Nature has made, and you uh, know, the more you look, the more you kind of located near Narragansett. Oh yeah, but you also travel all over the state. Yeah, I'm in Charlestown, so I go yeah. to uh, Moonstone Beach yep. and all those. There's a lot of nice spots. So and that's that where you find your posts and your logs. Yes. <laughs> yeah, most of the time. Yeah. Yeah. So this is one of those that. Uh, this one's called Tree of Life. I just like that cool white. Uh, that's that image that's found in nature, the, the continuous branching and growing of, it's, it's repeated throughout all of nature. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So. Very cool. Let's see. Uh, well, you were talking about, this one's kind of a, a more playful, Photograph yep, that I did yep. took it in uh, New York City uh -huh. this year, and uh, it's called "Hello, New in Town." <laughs> okay, he's, he's checking her out. I think. I guess you're right, <laughs> and you're. Uh, <laughs> and you're, you're it's funny because the the blocks and the shadows remind me of the compositions of your paintings too. I yeah. mean I could easily see you turning that into a painting uh -huh. with yeah. a lot more color. Right. Oh yeah. 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 Well we're down to our last minute so you probably oh, have geez. time for <laughs> wait a minute. Oh, well actually some, some kind of showstopper. Oh this one's a uh, Andy Warhol influenced oh sorry. oh yes your product placement. Oh, you need to explain that. Okay, uh, can I just uh, glance at it? Uh-huh. Well, I don't know, I was, um, for some reason, oh, we have a cat catnip that likes whipped cream. That's her big treat. Uh-huh. So one day I was just looking at the uh, spray cream can. Yeah. And, and I don't know, I, I started with that shape and then I said, oh, it could be a rocket. So I've got oh, the I see. flame All shooting right. out right. here. And then, I mean, the cow with the cream, and uh, here's the space capsule Got coming you. down to Earth. Yep. And uh, I'm not sure what else is that. Very, very mid-century modern there. We got kind of like a Warhol cow here. Yep. Uh, yeah. So. Well, that's about all the time we have. Pie today. in the sky. Okay. okay. I want to thank, thank you, Brad, for coming right. on the show, and right. uh, Thanks, uh, hope to see me. more of your stuff soon. Thank you. Okay, so our next guest is uh, 
a more relatively a relatively recent uh, acquaintance of mine. His uh, name is Frankie Washington, and we met uh, through Facebook of all places. <laughs> and he uh, participated in one of the free comic book day events we had a couple years ago. And uh, Frankie Washington, welcome to the show. Hello, how are you doing? Uh, you can give us a little bit of your background. Oh. Um, you know you're from Massachusetts originally. And yeah, Boston you, boy. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Boston boy. Uh, and uh, grew up in, uh, you know, grew up in Boston, J, uh, JP. Um, been drawing since I was a preteen. Mm -hmm. uh, active imagination. Yeah. Um, I, I also competitive, I suppose. I had a group of friends that I had who, you know, we would always kind of test each other. And they'd be like, you can draw a future car or whatever. And I'd be like, all right. But the thing about me was I was all about reference. Instead, like, my friends would just draw stuff and then they'll stop me. I would want to go a step further. Like, yeah. I would see a car, an actual real car, and go, oh, how'd that car look with jets on it? Yeah. And I'd want to know. So that, that was like the part of it, mm -hmm. of my mindset, where I would look at stuff and I would be like, oh, man, I want to take it to this stuff further and keep learning. And I just drew all the time and and you had teachers that recognized your ability yes. and they kind of encouraged you and you ultimately got a scholarship and you had to make a decision yes yeah i mean um well i, I it was one of those things where I, you know when you're in high school i had a lot of dreams mm -hmm. you know originally i thought i was gonna go in the air force mm -hmm. you know and and then i wanted to be a robotic engineer and then you know i was all these different things but my teachers thank goodness they just were like they, they knew where to steer me they were just like you you have this gift this is where you need to be. And so I followed that path. I went, I, you know, I made, I, I'm glad I made a decision to go to a school that focused on um, a working artist yes. kind of mentality. Because right. as soon as I stepped in, they were just like, you're gonna, you, you we're going to teach you how to work. Yeah, you can learn all about the aesthetics and, and all about uh, everything that goes into making an art piece, but mm -hmm. when you try to apply that to a business setting, it's a whole different skill set. Well, I think one of the things about it is artists don't have to be afraid of business. Yeah. I mean, the thing is, it's about understanding it. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't think you need to know all the, the P's and Q's unless you want to go to business school, right. but you need to understand the basics, the foundations of it, and, you know, and learn. I mean, this is, you're talking before the days of the internet. Yep. I mean, I literally had to go knock on doors and bam, right in the face. <laughs> we don't want you. And you wait for somebody to look yeah. at a portfolio. Yep. I remember those days vividly. Oh, yeah. so I had to learn how to write nice letters. We need you to know, start, continue. start showing some of your artwork. Oh, sure, sure. we got a lot to cover and we can continue to talk. Oh, not a problem. Yep, absolutely. Well, here, I mean, let me take you to the first thing. <coughs> Uh, this is a novel uh -huh. called The Last Daughter of Lilith. Now, will you put that on the table so sure. it's facing that camera? There you and go. So we can get a nice uh, view see of if that. it stands it's up. It's not going to stand right. by itself. Uh, this is actually a, story, a novel written by my wife. Yes. Um, but, you yeah, know, you can I've, say her name. Oh, her name is Jessica Washington, <laughs> the wife. Oh, she's uh -huh. going to kill me. Yep, yep. Um, and so I've been doing some novel work as well, mm -hmm. like books and stuff like that. Here, can I put this yeah, down as well? Here. Okay. Absolutely. Cool. Here. This is some of the ones that are. The big company ones. This was a book called. Now, is that an anthology? Yes, it is. Okay, and that's and, a, and you might have to explain to some of our audience what a kaiju is. Kaiju is a God. There's so many terms, but it's strange. It's a Japanese term for strange beast. Oh, okay. Uh, in most cases, the giant monsters. Right. Um, Godzilla would be a kaiju. And it's and it, even though Godzilla is relatively recent, uh, there's a tradition of monsters that that uh, permeate Japanese mythology. Yes. And so, like, g giant demons. I mean, King yeah. Kong is a kaiju. But, yeah. So anything that's gigantic or just strange or whatever. I've I never mean, met a kaiju I didn't like. Well, to join the club. <laughs> <laughs> and right. I also got into giant robots as well. I'm a huge oh, fan. Let's move these over sure. here. Sure, sure. Yes, yeah, so those are mechs. And these are mechs. Uh huh. And is that another anthology? There's another anthology okay. for the same you, company. You did the cover? Um, actually, no, I didn't do the cover. Oh, okay. I actually did the. Oh, you have. Maybe you can show. If, yeah. I don't know how it's going to be picked up, but Let's you can see. show it now. This is an example. Now, what would you have used to create that? That's pretty involved. Um, pen and ink. Uh, pen and ink. And then um, I use gray tone in uh, Photoshop. Okay. All right. But I also do traditional, like, uh, markers. Now, what size would that artwork have been in? Um, I tend to draw at a, uh, see here, I'll even show you. Yeah. These are the pages that, oh, here you go. This is that actual piece right here. Oh, nice. There you go. Okay. There's the madness. So that's, that's a, uh, eight and a half by 11. Eight and a half by 11. Pretty, very standard, like, uh, copy paper size. Yes. 
And you sit there and uh, do you use uh, brush or pens or what do you use? Um, I use Pentel brush pens and Microns. Okay. And I mean, I, I'm one of those kind of artists where I tend to, I see here. You ever, you ever sit there with a crow quill and go at it? I do have them. <laughs> but it, you know, it's, it's, it depends on what you feel. Yeah. I'm one of those kind of artists. I, I, I definitely have that feeling where I go, well, if I'm bored or whatever, let me just see what else, you know. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, brushes, I mean, dip brushes stuff. work well. Now, this would be trading card artwork. Okay, so yeah, so you work in all different media. So when you do something like that, and you'll show the actual cards at some mm -hmm. point, I'm sure, but yes. uh, they get shrunk down to uh, two and a half by three, I believe, like there baseball card size. There you go. And those were, uh, did you do the coloring on those? Yes, I did. Okay, so the, you would have done those in pen and ink and then scanned the artwork, yes, right? Yes, I would, yep. And then you go into Photoshop and then you add the color. Yes. And the reason why I do that now is because uh, it's faster um, for clients. You yeah. know, uh, if you need an edit. Yep. Um, I'm so hardwired for edits with clients. Yeah. So when the computer came in, you know, the, when Photoshop came in, yeah. it's like a godsend. Yeah. Um, I have worked, when I worked in advertising, I did work with um, dyes and stuff like that. Sure. Uh, Dr. Q -tips. Yep. Yep. Using Q-tips. Using Q-tips to color. Yep. So, and, I, and I love that. I still do that with sure. sketch cards and stuff. But yeah. with stuff like this, and it's, you're doing high volume, you want it fast. Yes. You want to be able to, if there's somebody says, hey, we want something that's purple or bluish or whatever, and you want to be able to change. you sit there and you do an, a painting yeah. and, so, and you submit it to the art director yeah. or whoever's in charge, and they look at it and they'll say, hmm, I like this, but can you change this color? You're not going to go back and do yeah. the painting over. You're going to go back and yeah. change the coloring in Photoshop. Yeah. It, it, all, everything is about speed. Yes. I try to tell any young artist out there, it's about enhancing your ability to... It, get faster and actually uh, we, we were talking because earlier about time is money time is money and but we were talking about jack kirby right and jack kirby and that's and why i love him yes. he learned if you look at his original stuff in the 40s and yep. then up later he had to learn how to create a style that was super fast so that he could pop right. out all those books and still look tremendous yes so that's i've kind of gotten to that where i now have my technique down yeah where i can go bing 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 bing, bing, bing boom yeah done and, and give you, me something else and you you were talking earlier about reference and, and how you use your reference and mm -hmm. you absorb that reference. Yes. And so if you need to draw a car, you know how to draw a car. Oh, I had to draw tons to of stuff. Ford. I worked uh -huh. on a lot of major campaigns, so Ford and trucks, stuff I hated. Mm -hmm. But it helped me, you know. So now yeah. I can sit there and I, I can get the basic shape of a vehicle. And then if I really need a specific kind of vehicle, then I'll, I can look on my phone or whatever for a rough thing. But there's a Ford such and such and yeah. bigger bang and, and, and when I, it up. When I talk to my kids, I say, you know, learning to draw is learning to see. So every time you draw something, mm -hmm. you're basically absorbing that knowledge into yourself of course. and using it in of your artwork. And, and you draw from, I, when I lived in Boston, I used to go up to Harvard, I would just sit out on a Sunday and just draw people, real yeah. things. Yeah. You know, and, and you it's get like your you settings, you get their clothing. I mean, yes. everybody's defined by how they look. Yes. And, uh, and your whole personality can be set up by what you're wearing that day. I always tell any young artist out there, draw, draw, draw. I'm not just saying it just to say it. I'm saying draw everything that you can. I mean, And I'm it. always stressing not to just draw from in your head. Yes. Draw, draw from yeah. life whenever you can. Cre creativity is wonderful. Yeah. I mean, I mean this, creativity mm -hmm. is, you know, taking stuff like this, like this cover I did. Yep. I did this cover for Alterna Comics. Yep, yep. And yeah, you know, it was like, it's a creature. Uh, a, a monster, whatever, I, and I have a rough idea of, of you it's know, reptilian. It's an amalgam of different kinds exactly. of Exactly. Like, I wanted to create biology. a Godzilla. Well, he, he came at me and he said, Frank, we need a creature that's reading these comic books, but he's almost like a Godzilla creature. Yeah. So I said, okay, that's fun. Yeah. But also there is a rough understanding. Like, I have a right. rough understanding of things. I put the buildings in and stuff like that. Sure. Um, I do need reference many times. Sometimes yeah. an alligator has different skin than, say, a gecko lizard sure. or something like that. So, and, and these days, people will call you out on it. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. They don't you mess around. You put your thing up on Facebook, and they'll say, those scales aren't right for that kind of snake. <laughs> but then there's also these fun things, too. This is your, your dabbling in fine art here. Ooh. <laughs> this is the fun stuff. <clears throat> I've seen you at conventions with the that. The prints. Yep. Uh-huh. Yes. And, you know, again, this was like a contest thing. And sometimes I challenge myself, like, you got a character like this, like Voltron. This would have been more of your Go Nagai uh, influence. Yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> the chance of just drawing these giant monsters, fantastic battle scenes and such and So such. you like giant robots and giant monsters, so why not draw, draw a giant monster fighting a ro giant robot? <laughs> 
Wow, you tried to twist me up there. <laughs> well, actually, let me see. No, I think there you, you got me. I'm saying that, yeah. you know, you, one of the things that you can do as an artist is to do what you love, right? Yeah, flip it over. Yeah. Here you go. <coughs> Here's a version. I knew you could do it. Uh-huh. Absolutely. Yeah, Jaguar, uh -huh. Ultraman, fighting against various creatures. Now, you're, that's pretty old school, though. Yeah. You got you to gotta get the kids into this stuff. <clears throat> but also... I can draw stuff like this. Uh huh. Wow, that's all over the place. You want you want to have range. Like yeah. I was all, as a, as a student, I always wanted to have different range. Yes. I wanted someone to look at my work and go, "Wow, did one guy do this?" I've had that. People go, "Wow, you did all this?" I'm like, "Yeah." This is one that people kind of like. It was shocked because they were like, "Did humanoids?" Remember the human? I was like, "Yeah, yeah." Humanoids. That was an '80s thing, right? That was an '80s thing. Yeah. 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 So you were. You probably came of age in the 80s, and so you yes, kind of were very influenced like that. No, very my, much so. My influence started with uh, Astro Boy and Gigantor. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> which which I, have, I have driven those two. I've, mm -hmm. I've driven. I've drawn those two. And, but not like a big piece. So thanks for giving me the idea. I'm oh, always, yeah. when I go to shows and stuff, people shoot out various ideas and stuff, and I go, all right, let me just put it in my little notebook. Maybe. Do you do sketches when you're at shows? Yes, mm -hmm. and it always drives me crazy because I wish that people would commission me beforehand because then I could put. I feel like I can put a little bit more into the sketch. But um, since I'm fast, yeah, I, I pump out tons of sketches. They tend to get me at the last minute. You know, when the show's about to end, and all of a sudden, hey man, can you just draw me like uh, you know some mecha like Gundam or something? I'm yeah, like, yeah, uh -huh. yeah, yeah, yeah. all right, let me just bust it out. That's when it becomes a job. Yeah, sometimes. Yeah, but but again, I've been doing this for so long that part of my mind clicks in. Now we were talking earlier about the kaiju card sets. Mm -hmm. Now um, you said that it was uh, for a company that was supposed to design a video game, yes. and they kind of diverted into this thing because of the Kickstarter sure. involved, and they needed to use the funding for something. So, how many of those did you draw? Ooh, I, I'd say roughly. 300 plus. So that's 300 different creatures. Yes. And, uh, but, but the people who paid into the Kickstarter, those were their creatures. Right. So they designed the creature and yeah. you basically rendered them. He, and yeah. That he was sending me drawings. Concept. And some were, you know, they were chicken scratch. Uh huh. But that was okay. I mean, as long as I had a rough idea and that they would give some explanation on what the creature did, yep. he would just be like, well, Frank, this is a scenario. Um, put it out. And did they give you, did they, was there text for the back? Is that how it worked he, out? He put the text. Yeah. He handled yeah. that. I yeah. just, he just hired me as an illustrator just to put the artwork mm -hmm. and stuff, which I love. I was like, fine, I don't, you know, just, that's, that right there is a heavy lifting right there. Taking someone's vision and then trying to, you know, add what I add to it to sort of make it grow. Some people weren't happy with some of the changes, mm -hmm. the stuff that I did. And yep. I had to tell them, I'm like, well, he told me, the guy, yeah. the person who hired me, yeah. told me to do it. So, sure. you know, I got to follow their, their, their move and whatever. But other people were very happy. They, mm -hmm. were, I was, they were shocked. They were like, wow, you really made my character look like this? And then I was like, wow, yeah, man. So you basically have set up a life for yourself where you absorb the things that you loved and then mm -hmm. you kind of pursued that for yes. the whole span. I'm a very stubborn person. Uh -huh. I think that, again, there's that part of me where it stays in my mind when my sergeant, when I was doing security, when he said that, he said, why did you go to school? And I had other people, too, who said that, because there was one moment my first year of art school. It was rough. Mm -hmm. It was rough. I was on my own. I was working. It was just really tough. And I began second-guessing myself. Yeah. And this teacher, I had a wonderful teacher named Hal Trafford, and he said, Frank, well, I'm going to go for a walk. Walk down Beacon Street. Now, forget it. And I'm in, I'm in my 20s and stuff, and I'm just like, I don't know, man. And he's just like, Frank, look around. He said, who do you think did that sign? He pointed to the cheer sign. I said, I don't know. He said, an artist. Mm -hmm. He said, who do you think do the, the public gardens, mm -hmm. you know, the flowers and stuff? Mm -hmm. I said, I don't know. He said, an artist designed that. He said, the, the, the cars that you see on the street, the buildings that you see over there, who did you think did that? The clothes on your back. Mm -hmm. He said, never let anyone tell you the worth of an artist is lesser than. He said, the artists have contributed so many things to this world. You're only asking for a little sliver. Yep. That's all you're asking okay. for. So you should feel proud of doing <laughs> we're, it. We're getting the sign that we've run out of time. Right. So I want to thank you for coming and showing your artwork. Thanks a lot. Hey, thank you so much. Okay. Wayne. All right, man.